What's going on y'all? So today we're gonna be working on the wild hog trap. Um, we typically don't have hogs on any of my family's land or like any of the land that I hunt on. Uh, they, they might pass through like once every other year. I might get like one or two trail cam pictures of a hog. Like literally, it's like maybe every other year. But the past two years, right when the rut is about to start or when the rut is going on, hogs have been passing through and then they always like get me distracted because then I'm trying to get one of the hogs <laughs> and then like a buck will slip in somewhere while I'm over here trying to see what's going on with the hogs but um I've never killed a hog on my family's land uh every time when they pass through I start going hard trying to get one because uh if y'all seen any of my other wild hog hunting videos on the page every time I've got a hog it's uh I went somewhere and I had to like pay to um, hunt them. So I'm kind of excited to try to get one on our own land. And anytime I tried to hunt them out here, it just never works because it's usually not a lot of them. But um, last month, a, a sow kept going over to my feeder over here. And we'll walk over there in just a minute. But that sow kept hitting, hitting my feeder every night around the same time, every night. So I went and sat in the stand several nights trying to see if I could like catch a sliving never happened like I, I could hear her but she would never get in front of the stand so i don't know if she was smelling me or what was going on but i decided to get around that or preparing for the future when they pass through again i would build this trap right here so me and one of my cousins we came out here and built this trap We started out trying to build like a figure C trap, but the particular kind of fencing that I bought, it just wasn't working. Like, um, if you're gonna build a figure C trap, you probably need to use cattle panels. And what I bought is a uh, horse paneling. I wanted to get something that was five feet because I saw online where some people were saying if they got the cattle paneling and it was four feet, sometimes the hogs would be able to jump out of it. So, um, I couldn't find cattle paneling that was five feet. I believe they sell it. But everywhere I went around where I'm where I live, couldn't find it. So I went with this horse paneling and we got the T post. Um I'm gonna just give y'all like a little rundown of the trap and how it looks and hopefully we will catch something eventually. I mean I'm pretty sure we're gonna catch something. I don't know how long it's gonna take. But um let me show y'all the trap and then when I catch something we'll be back. So, Alright y'all, this is the trap that we built. We originally had a plan for it to be like a figure C trap, but um, based on the kind of paneling that I use, like I said before, we decided to just build a trap door for this one because that uh, their fencing it wasn't working how we wanted it to for the figure C trap. Uh, the cattle panels will probably work better for that, but since we used this horse paneling, we decided to go ahead and just uh, build a trap door for this thing. And it, it hasn't been that many hogs around here. It's kind of like a, I don't want to say it's a seasonal thing, but they usually just pass through. So we went ahead and just built this kind of trap door. I don't foresee it being like a lot of hogs coming through here, but um, this, this trap should do the trick. And what we have here is T posts. A lot of people will tell you to put the T, T posts four feet apart. But I've seen other people complaining that once they put them four feet apart, that the hogs would tear the trap up. So we got these T-posts about two feet apart. And uh, those T-posts actually are going to serve as like, kind of like a, I don't want to call it a coil spring, but when the hogs are like ramming against this trap, it's going to like give way a little so that the trap won't, you know, I guess break. It's going to kind of give a little and kind of spring the fence back in so that the hogs can't get out of here. And uh, what I was working on today was finishing up this trap door. Now see, this is just some wood that I got from the store and then painted it and built this trap door right here. So we got a pulley with a rope on it. That rope is going back here. So that's gonna be the trigger for this trap. 
just two pieces of rebar. And then I got like a stick with the rope tied on it. And what we gonna do, I got two buckets over here. One of them has corn with molasses on it. And I ran out of molasses, so I used some syrup. So syrup and molasses on the corn in this bucket. And then this bucket right here smells like death. Oh my God, that bucket has corn that I've had fermenting for literally like a month when the uh, pigs first popped up on the camera. So that corn has, oh, it might have like Hawaiian punch. I think I put some beer in there, uh, some yeast. What else? Just a bunch of random stuff and had it sitting in that bucket in the sun for over a month. So um, the thought process behind that is that deer will not eat that corn. Like once that corn has been fermented like that, it'll keep the deer from coming out the trap and we won't catch any in here. And if we were to, which I'm pretty sure they will not come in here because of how that corn is going to smell, the deer can jump this fence. They can just hop out. So, um, what we going to do, I'm going to take that corn, put it around in the trap in here. I'm going to put some on the outside of the trap to try to get them over here. Hopefully they smell that stuff. And then we're going to put some all around in here to try to get the whole sound or however many pigs. We're trying to get them in here. I'm kind of focused on getting the big sow and uh, the boar. I think that would be crazy if we uh, catch them. But um, I'm also gonna put a lot of corn around this trigger back here. And what is gonna end up happening, those hogs are gonna come in here, they're gonna start eating on this corn back here. And hogs are kind of rough. So they probably gonna get the knocking on the rebar, trying to get the corn. And they gonna hit this trigger right here, this little trap door trigger. And the door's gonna slam shut. So, let me try to demonstrate how this thing works right quick. All right, y'all. Hopefully y'all can hear me because it is kind of windy right now. But um, I'm gonna just demonstrate how this trap door works so y'all can see it. So, basically, take the trigger that I showed you. We're gonna just pull it back like that. And set it between the rebar. And once the pigs come in here and they trip that trigger, the door is gonna slam shut. Just like that. It's pretty simple. But um, I think it's gonna work. I've seen a lot of people online using this kind of trap and it looks like it's gonna work. So when they come in here, they get to eating on the corn. Hopefully we trigger the door and we got them. I can't wait. I cannot wait till we catch some, bruh. This is gonna be crazy. Um, like I said, every time I've ever been able to hunt wild hogs somewhere, I had to pay a lot of money. So it's going to be pretty cool if I trap some on my uh, uncle's land, you know. So let me set the door back so I can get out of here. But I'm probably going to pre-bait the trap for like another week or so. And then I got a week where I'm going to be off of work. That's when I'm going to set the trap because then I can come uh, check it early every morning. Because I think the longer the pigs are in the trap, the more they'll try to figure how they can get out. And uh, once it's morning time, you don't want to let them linger in the trap. They'll probably figure how to try to jump out or how to try to dig under the fence. And so, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to put like a piece of wood in the door to hold it open for like another week. And hopefully the hogs will get to coming in here. And then I'll start cornering it up more regularly. And hopefully they'll start coming in and out and uh, they'll feel like safe to come in and out of the trap. All right, so right now I'm gonna just put some of that fermented corn in here and then I'm gonna put some of the uh, molasses and syrup corn in here as well. I'll probably put some of that on the outside and a little at the back of the trap. And um, I've got a piece of wood up under the door so that it won't shut. Um, I'm just gonna do that so that the pigs will get used to coming in and out of the trap. Now they should be able to smell this from like a mile away. But I don't want this to touch my clothes or shoes at all. Ooh. I wish y'all could smell that.
And again, I'm just trying to get those hogs used to coming in here. Hopefully this is going to work. Now this is some of that corn with the syrup and molasses. It smells delicious. Like, it smells so good, I probably would eat it, man. <laughs> mm. So now they got good smelling corn in here and fermented death smelling corn. So now I'm going to show you how they food plot over there where I got the pictures of the hog. We will get out of here. Um, I've been trying to do some bow hunting for deer in this spot. So hopefully the hogs don't push the deer out and uh, we'll try to see if we can't get a deer or something and I'll keep y'all updated on all of that. But let's go on and get out of here. I'll show you that food plot real quick. All right, y'all. I am happy about this. Do you hear me? Oh my God, bruh. I'm no food plotologist. So a lot of times my plots will fail. But do y'all see this? Jesus Christ. And this this piece of uh, this little plot right here is also surrounded by a lot of pines. Which some people try to tell you that if you uh, plant some around plant pines, it won't grow that well because the soil is acidic. But y'all see it. Um, This is the feeder right here. This is where I got those pigs on trail cam and uh I actually have a bow stand right there so I've been planning to come back here and try to see if I can't shoot a deer with the bow but now it's looking like I might have the opportunity to shoot a pig with the bow but um one thing that I'm just really afraid of is that those pigs are gonna come in here and destroy the plot because that is wheat oats and uh daikon radishes and it is all growing like I said before, I'm not a food plotologist, so sometimes my plots completely fail, and I'm like, you know, just sick, devastated. But um, this one is doing extremely well down here, and it's just kind of <laughs> nerve-wracking that the hogs done popped up down here. Because I think they are notorious for uh, tearing up wheat and oat fields. But man, do y'all see that? That's the wheat, the oats, and the radishes. It's all coming up. It probably would have been even better if I got this plot in a little earlier in the year. Because this is like one of the last days of October. So I'm hoping, um, I'm pretty sure the wheat and oats going to do just fine when it gets cold. I'm not sure about the radishes because they're still so young. So hopefully that frost doesn't kill the radishes. I think if they were a little bigger, then I wouldn't have to worry about that at all. But um, those radishes are still like kind of young and small. So fingers crossed, hopefully the frost doesn't kill them because I think the first frost will be here uh, literally this week, like in a couple of days. But um, yeah, I just want y'all to see that and because I am proud of how this plot is looking right now. And I planted a ton of plots on like all the properties that I have access to, except for one, I believe. And I just got access over there. So, this is unbelievable. But let me walk over here a little bit more. I'm trying to see this. And I actually planted like the other paths that I can't see with the stand because I think um, once the spring rolls back around for turkey season, if I got this stuff growing like on all of the paths around here where I usually turkey hunt, it's gonna make this spot even better. Because the turkeys love eating this uh, wheat and oats, this green stuff that's growing. This is this is amazing. This is beautiful. It makes my heart smile. Stuff like this, man. And I got a, a, a rifle stand back here as well. But uh, ironically, I've killed one deer in this location with the bow. None with the rifle. I've never killed a deer with a rifle back here, which is kind of surprising. I mainly get um, ducks and turkeys at this location. No deer. Well, one deer last year with the bow. That's the, the only deer I've killed with a bow so far. But, um, yeah. 
just wanted to show you all that plot before we get out of here. And hopefully, in a couple weeks, we'll have some hogs in the trap. And I'll definitely keep you all updated on that. But we gonna, um, I'm going to run around to the other side and put a little corn out. I have another bow stand coming into this spot. And hopefully, I might shoot a doe over there. I'm hoping. I've been getting a lot of trail cam pics of does and uh, some yearlings over there. So, I think that's going to work out as well. This is crazy, y'all. But anyway, in the meantime, y'all can like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I'm posting some more content. And, uh... Be looking at for that that haul video because we gonna catch them y'all I'm telling you. But um y'all also can go over to www.bloodswittinggears87.com if you want to shop some of my merch and uh I think that's it. I'll holler at y'all good people later. Peace.